the question that comes up the whole time is this can't be the end and i'm like it's the end it, it we're at, in the end times right we, we are in the end times and the more you believe we're not in the end times the more you want more of the world and you can't have more of the world that's it you arrived near the end that was the allotted time that you were given some people have 70 80 90 years by reason of strength 80 years 70 or 80 years by reason of strength and if you're lucky and you get 90 or 100 that's fantastic and those people got to live from 1930 1920 to now it's fantastic right they got the longest amount of time that it's over there's a portion of seven years left and this sounds like craziness it sounds like madness to people you know when you say well we're in the end times the mark is here you know the number and the name of the beast is in that thing um this is it right the fact that it doesn't have an actual manifest mark somewhere yet it's coming but that's not the mark the marks the physical rewriting suetonius 12 caesars every time a roman emperor wrote an edict every time they wrote an edict to the masses in all of the protectorates throughout the roman empire they would leave these edicts on the doors the gates of the city and when a scribe was asked to come along and revise the edict maybe it was edict number three right three four i v right every time an edict was changed revised the scribe would chisel away or write sometimes they would write they would change the edict of the emperor but they would leave what the emperor had said below that they would leave that information but they would scratch it out they would they would strike it out those the exact words because it was used in the in, in it came to be used in the legal profession when you strike something out you strike it out so the scribes would come in and they would strike out edict number three or seven or twelve or whatever the edict number it was and it was called when they struck out an edict it was called a mark and it's the same with rewriting anything if you rewrite something it's actually the scribe's mark that's on the king's edict the key the king's list of edicts so apostle paul is using imagery of his time he's using terminology that relates to the roman empire and anyone of that era understood, and a good historian, a good scholar of the Bible understands that if the scribe has come along and written over one of the edicts, then that's the mark, right? They'll know, they'll say it's Edict 3, but it's there's a mark. In other words, it's been revised. The scribe revised the, the edict of the emperor. And Apostle Paul knew this. And for that reason, he, he understood that the last thing that you want to do is to desecrate, abominate the edicts of the king, right? The edicts of the king, it's an abomination to come in anybody other than the scribe, anybody to come in and scratch out or vandalize an edict because those edicts were incredibly important. That was, and you may not like the edict of the emperor, but you had to respect it because the penalty of not respecting that edict was, was um, basically um, a crime against the Roman Empire. People are in a state of enamorment. They're in a state of love. They are paramours to the world. They love the world. They want more of the world. They want to get married. They want to have kids. They want to go and travel to all the many countries, the myriad countries they see in travelogues on TV commercials. The world has placed lots of temptations in front of you by design so that you now feel, hold on a minute, the passport to traveling is no longer just a passport. It's now a 
it's now an abomination, right? There's no more choice. Now it's take this thing and you've got the world again. It was always by design. It was always by design that, I um, don't know why Rod Serling is on that shot there. It looks like a horn on his head, doesn't it? It's probably a shadow or something, but that that's a bit freaky. Need to change that. Um, this is for another program that was being done. Uh, I wanted to show you something very interesting. But what is really happening is that people want to have more of the world. And because they want to have more of the world, they are very close, very, very close to getting tempted into just taking this thing, right? They're very close. And thus comes perdition. Thus comes the end. And they don't realize it. 